Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna take a look at how to install fresh RSS in Open Media Vault 5 using Docker and Portainer. So I've actually had a few people request um, some RSS uh, feed type applications. And uh, one of them specifically that was requested was fresh RSS. So I've taken a look at it, it looks really good. So let's jump over to my desktop and take a look at how easy this is to install in Open Media Vault 5 using Docker and Portainer. Okay guys, so here we are on my desktop and this is the fresh RSS uh, website, but we're not gonna really spend any time on here. Just know that it's here if you've got questions or or want to know more about the service itself. Uh, I will have a link to this in the description as well as everything else, but just know that there is a website you can go to if you've got questions or want to know more about Fresh RSS. So I'm going to go ahead and close that for now. And what we'll do is we'll jump over to uh, hub.docker.com. Uh, we're going to go to the Linux server page for Fresh RSS. And we're just gonna scroll down here a little bit until we get down to this Docker Compose right here. So what we'll do is we'll actually go ahead and right click this, we'll go to Copy, um, and then we'll come over here to Portainer. And normally you're probably gonna see this when you first log in. What we'll do is we'll click on Stacks, we'll click on Add a Stack. We're just gonna paste that in there and I'll copy and paste this in here for the name. Now the first seven lines are just set up for everything below. Um, but, so the first thing we've got to figure out is our user ID and our group ID. Now that's going to be the user ID and group ID for the at, for the account that we're logged in to Portainer with at the moment. Uh, that happens to be admin for me, but this may be something different for you. Uh, what you'll want to do in that case is go ahead and go over here to Putty, and we'll drag this up into this window, and we'll type in our server address. Uh, of course, your address will be different than mine, but go ahead and type in your address, leave it on port 22, and go ahead and click Open. Move this over here. And then we're gonna log in as root and we're gonna get, type in our root password. I typed that in wrong. Give it a second to fail, there we go. There we go. So again, we're looking for the ID of our admin account in this case. Now mine, I say admin because that's my username. So we're looking for the ID of the uh, user account you're logged in with presently. So I'll type in ID space admin and click enter. You can see my user ID or UID is 998 and my GID or group ID is 100. So we can go ahead and minimize this and we can say user ID is 998 and group ID is 100. Below that, we've got a time zone. So I'm in America and I'm close to Denver. So we'll go ahead and type that in there as well. Now below that, we've got path to data. Now this is where our configuration folder is gonna go. So what we'll do in that case is actually come back over to Open Media Vault. Um, and you should, if you followed my other videos, you should have a, a configuration folder up here. If you don't, what you'll wanna do, at least if you wanna set up the way I do, I like to have a configuration folder where all of my different applications, all of their data goes into there, um, into a, a specific folder inside the uh, configuration folder. Um, go ahead and create, go here to shared folders, create a config folder or configuration folder, whatever you wanna name it. Uh, once you've got that, then you'll go over here to SMB CIFS, you'll click on shares, you'll click on add a share, and then you'll select the configuration folder that you just created there. Um, and then uh, make sure that you set public to only guests. And then you'll click save, it'll take it a minute, um, and you'll click a yellow uh, apply button up here, then your configuration folder is good to go. Okay, so what we actually need to do here is go back over to shared folders, <clears throat> and we need to grab this line right here, which says SRV dev disk by label files slash config. Um, I'm lazy, so what I like to do is right click, go to inspect, um, go ahead and come down to where it should actually be uh, highlighted right here. Um, and you can see that this is actually the same bit of data that's in there, so I can just double click that, right click, Go to copy, come back over to Portainer, paste that in there, and I'll do a trailing slash, and I'll add a fresh RSS right there, <clears throat> just like so. So that's where all of our data for this particular application or instance will go, is in this particular uh, folder in the configuration directory. Okay, so the next thing we buy down here is ports. Uh, it wants to run on port 80 by default, um, but there's a good chance that your Open Media Vault will be running on port 80. Now mine's on port 81, you can see that because it says colon 81. Uh, if yours doesn't have a colon and a number after it, you're on port 80. And that's fine, Open Media Vault can be on port 80. But what we wanna do in that case, we can't have this running on port 80 as well. So what I like to do is just add an 81 to the beginning of that. So you'll access it on port 8180, but on, it'll be on port 80 inside the container. So this is outside the container, this is inside the container. 
Um, and so you should just be able to change this to basically whatever port number you want. It, it doesn't have to be port 8180. It could be just any, any number you want it to be really, as long as you stick within the port numbers. So once we've got all of this information in here, uh, what we can do is just scroll down and click on deploy the stack. Okay, so it looks like it's ready to go there. So we can click here. We can actually see that fresh RSS is running. So if I click on here, uh, it looks like all of the services have started and are running. So what I'll do, so I'll just grab that URL and I'll come back over to here and I'll just type 8180 at the end like that. So it'll be your server IP address, colon, and then whatever port you put it at. So I'll click enter. So now we have started an installation process. Uh, the first thing it wants to know is what language do you want? Um, I'm gonna use English, but you can choose any of these in here that you'd like. So I'll go ahead and click submit. Uh, it looks like, of course, the, the container set all of this up when we did the deployment. So all of that should be good to go. So we can click on go to the next step. Now, the type of database, um, you've got three different options here, whether it's um, SQLite, MySQL, um, or PostgreSQL. I honestly don't know what that is. I've never used it. Uh, MySQL, I use a lot in PHP development, that sort of thing. Um, you could use any of these uh, for your home server. Um, this SQLite is gonna be just fine if it's just gonna be a few people utilizing this and that sort of thing. Now, if you get into a big, like say you're in a company infrastructure and you're setting this up, uh, you may wanna go so far as to set up a MySQL database and access it that way, uh, just because it'll be easier to manage uh, using a MySQL database versus an SQLite database. Um, but because I'm just setting this up for me, for inside my home, I'm gonna use SQLite um, and there's a good chance that SQLite will be just fine for you as well. So we'll Go ahead and click on submit. So of course it's gonna want a username. So I'm gonna type in DB Tech. Of course, you'll put in whatever you'd like there. Now for the authentication method, we've got a couple of options here. Um, and really there it shows three, but only two of them are available for this setup. Now we've got a web form where we'll put in a username and password, or there's none. Um, and this is and none is fine if you're gonna be the only one accessing it. But if you're setting this up, like say for your home, your office, whatever, um, having this set to none means anybody can get in here and add more stuff or change stuff, delete stuff, whatever. So it's usually good to have um, something in here uh, that requires a password. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in a password and I'll go ahead and then click submit. And now it says, congratulations, the installation was successful. Uh, we'll go ahead and click on complete. So now it wants me to log in. So I'll type in DB Tech and my password. And I'll go ahead and say, keep me logged in for 30 days. And I'll click log in. Okay, so here are just some default um, bits of information. These are uh, in there just from the installation itself. But I want to uh, add some of my own in here. So uh, I've got some of these. Oops, I've got, uh, say my website, for instance, has uh, an RSS feed. So what we can do is come up here to subscription management. We can type this in. Uh, we can go ahead and click plus. And uh, so the title, of course, is gonna be DB Tech. Uh, this is what it pulled from the description of my website. Uh, here's all of the URL information, uh, the category. Uh, you can create different categories if you'd like. Uh, you can decide where to show it uh, as far as visibility is concerned. Um, you can say how many articles you want to get at a time. Um, there's a lot of different options in here that you can go through. Um, but because of the way my website's set up, you just need that RSS feed. And I'll put that in the link down below in case you're interested in being notified anytime I release a new blog post. So uh, I want to show this uh, in the main category or the main stream there. So I'll go ahead and click on submit. So then we can click out. And if we come back over here to the homepage, here you can see the last 10 blog posts that are on my website. So if you wanna go ahead and uh, click on one of those, uh, here you can see there's the video that uh, talks about installing a Minecraft server on your Open Media Vault setup. Below that is the full blog post. So that's pretty cool that it just pulls all that in. Um, so all of that's great, but if you wanted to actually go look at something on the website or, or whatever the case may be, you can just click on the title. It'll pop that open in a new window. And there is my website with that blog post all set up and ready to go. Now there's one more thing I wanted to show here just real quick, uh, because YouTube is really, really garbage, uh, sometimes about notifying people about, um, about, being, uh, about new, new videos being uploaded. Man, if I could talk today. So what we're gonna do here is I'm actually going to create a new category. I'm gonna call this YouTube. And I'm gonna uh, go ahead and create that category. So now we've got an empty uh, category here. So what I'll do is I'll actually uh, paste this in here and I'll, I'll, I'll put this up here in the, in the URL bar as well so you can see it. So this right here is the RSS feed for my YouTube channel. So 
uh, and I'll put this in the link as well, or down in the description as well, rather. Um, but basically, if you take this string right here that I've got there, and then if you replace that with the channel uh, ID of whatever channel you want to get more information about or be notified when they release a new video, uh, you can just put in their channel ID right there where, you, where I've got that highlighted and you'll get a notification. Um, in fact, I'll just show you. So I'll go ahead and click here. Um, DB Tech, that's my YouTube channel name. There's my URL category. I'm gonna put that into there. Uh, I wanna put this actually in its own category uh, just to show how we can differentiate things here a little bit. So then I'll go ahead and click on Submit. We, then we can click out of there and then we can go uh, back to the home page. And then, of course, this is the mainstream. I could have put that in the mainstream if I wanted to, but I didn't. What I did was I put it over here in this YouTube stream. And here are all of are my last uh, probably 15 YouTube videos. So if I click on this first one, uh, it's just going to show the thumbnail here. Uh, of course, it's got the title and the opening, or the, the, I guess it's got the title twice there. It's got the thumbnail, and then it's got the full video description. Um, and then in between there, there's this little save icon. Ignore that. It doesn't do what you want it to do. But if you want to go watch the video, you can click there and it'll take you right over to that particular video. So that's all there is to setting this up and even getting notifications from YouTube. Okay, guys, there you go. That's how easy it is to set this up. Now, I know that this was this video was a few minutes, several minutes long, maybe. Um, but once you kind of get the hang of using stacks and how to how to configure them, once you remember what your user ID and your group ID and your your configuration paths, and once you start kind of getting those, your, your mind wrapped around how those things work, deploying these stacks will go really, really fast. Uh, usually 60 seconds or less uh, for some of the simpler stacks, a couple of minutes for maybe some of the intermediate stacks. Very, very simple stuff to do. Those stacks are a very cool way to do this. And that's why I keep showing how to do this kind of thing with stacks. So I think that pretty much covers everything I wanted to show in this video. If you found the video helpful, uh, whether it was the stacks thing, uh, whether it was the, the RSS thing in general, learning how or learning that there's actually an RSS feed for individual channels that you can use to pull content and get notifications that way as well. Uh, if any of that was helpful, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up, it would help me out a ton. I'd really appreciate it. And if you enjoy this kind of content, showing how to set up different kind of uh, applications and instances and things like that on your open Open Media Vault server, or even just, even if you've just got a Docker and Portainer server, uh, you don't have to have Open Media Vault. But I like to use Open Media Vault just as kind of a home base where everything kind of gets tied in. If you enjoy this kind of content uh, and learning how to, uh, to, to deploy these different things, get subscribed because I've got lots of new ideas coming for different videos. So with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.